Hey everyone, Joe here. Welcome back to the Pro Tools First Pro course. In this part, part six, I'm gonna be showing you the user interface. We're gonna be going over where you can find all of the most important functions that you'll need to record, edit, and mix your music. So once Pro Tools First is all loaded up, you'll be shown your dashboard where you can uh, log in or sign out of your Avid account. You can create a new session, so we can give it a name, um, and then create a new session to start working on or we can open up a previous session. So I'm just gonna click on, on this one and click open. And you'll be from, if you've seen any of the previous, if you, uh, any of the previous videos so far, or you've used Pro Tools first before, you'll be familiar with this screen. Uh, this is just the default layout for the edit window. This is what we call the edit window. You can see up there, it says edit. I know it looks a bit overwhelming when you first start, you've got tons of icons, you've got a menu packed with options, but we don't need to learn every single thing. Some of these you'll probably, some of these, some of these functions you'll probably never use, um, or at least it'll be something you can learn as and when you need them. But we're going to go over the main ones that you need to get started. So this is the edit window, and then this is a track uh, which has some audio on. If you saw the previous part, will be imported some music. That's it right there. If we created a new track, uh, whether that's for an instrument, a MIDI instrument for your keyboard or an audio track like this one, they'd appear down here on the list and you'd, and you'd see that scroll bar light up so you can look through them. But we will be seeing that um, lay in later parts of the course. Then at the top here, we've got the toolbar. You've got l pretty much everything you need up here, including obviously the, the play and stop record buttons but we've also got the transport window down here, which is movable. Um, you can get rid of it because you do have pretty much everything from the transport uh, up here. Um, so I am gonna get rid of that now just to give us some more screen space and, and to avoid any confusion. And then on the left here, you can see tracks. This is just giving you a list of all the tracks in your session. So that one's there, um, BP1, that's just the name of the song. And we've got another one that's hidden there. So if that was active, if that was showing, then you'd, you'd see that there too. And then the other main window is the mixer or mix window, which is a completely separate window, which we'll be going over in the next part of this course. So let's take a, a closer look at the edit window and the tracks, sort of the, the main thing you'll be looking at when you're working on your audio. So let's hide that one again just to make things easier. And we've got a track here. If you just hover over the bottom there of the track, you can drag, you can drag that to make it easier to see. And we're zoomed right out at the moment. You can see that whole piece of audio there. If you use this, this little bar at the bottom, you can zoom right in and see the audio close up or zoom out. You can also on, on um, on your keyboard, press R or T to zoom out and in, respectively. If we had a lot more tracks or, or, or we, we bring this track down, like I said, you'll see this activate so you can go up and down and then the bottom scroll bar to go left and right. On the left here on the track, you've got the name of the track. If you double click that, you can change the name. So we could just call it broken, for example. Okay that and then it's not gonna shorten what we're seeing there. And just below that, you've got the, the controls for that particular track. So you can mute it, you can solo it, so you'd only be able to hear that track if you had multiple tracks. Um, you've got your record button and your monitor button so that if something's plugged in and you're playing with the monitor on, you'll be able to hear it even if you're not recording. But again, we'll be going over that in, in the recording part. Then here are your inserts, which is where you'll be adding plugins and effects. Then you've got the input and output. Input is basically you're selecting an input on your audio interface of where the mic is plugged in or or, um, or, or whatever you've got plugged into there. And then the output is where it's going to, where it's gonna come out of your speakers. Um, so monitor one and two on my audio interface is where my speakers are plugged in. Just below that, you've got the volume for the track. So that will start at zero move that up and down there and then the panning so that's the left 
channel, your left speaker or left headphone, and that's the right one. And you can move that forward and back, uh, left to right on the, on the stereo field. This is gonna look a little bit different for other tracks. If I just create a, a new track quickly um, for a master fader, for example, which is just a fader that controls the entire, um, the entire session can change the volume of the entire session and add effects and things. So obviously we don't have record on there um, and, and we don't have input and, and things like that because you're not recording onto a or master, it's just a fader. Let's just shrink that down for now so we can focus more on this track here. Um, and to the left you'll see that the, the master track's been added into our track list. Now let's move up to the toolbar just above here. I'm going to go over the main most important things you need to know on here. So firstly, we've got these grid options, shuffle, spot, slip and grid. Now what these do is change how you, you can move clips of audio or MIDI on, um, on the edit window. So in slip, if you grab this uh, piece of audio, you can just drag it around and put it wherever you want. If you go to grid, it's going to move and snap to the grid there. And you can see at the top here, it's snapping to seconds. So three seconds, four seconds. On spot, um, that's not something you'd probably be using too often. It's when you want to drop in uh, a piece of audio at a very specific point in time. And then shuffle, we're going to be going over that a lot when we, when we get to the editing part of the course. It means that you won't be able to move it, but any change you make, if I delete delete a piece of audio, for example, it fills the gap. Um, it, it brings back the, the audio that's preceding it uh, to fill that gap. Whereas if we were on slip, it would just leave the space there. But we're going to leave it on slip for now and then move over to the, these tools. Now, you might have already noticed when I hovered over this piece of audio, uh, when the mouse was at the bottom half of it there, you've got this hand and you can drag it around. When it's on the top half of it, it's got the carrot there so you can highlight. And then when we're in the corner there, it's got this little square. If you click and drag, it's going to do a fade in. So it's going to gradually increase the, the volume or decrease it if you were doing it at the end of a clip. When I say clip, I just mean a piece of audio, basically, or a, a piece of MIDI, just one of these sort of chunks of data. So the tool changes where, where you put it, and this is called the multi-tool. And as you can see here, we've got three different things selected. If we just select one of these, for example, the hand, it's not going to change. It's just going to give us that hand and let us move around. Um, if we click on this one, it's just going to give us that carrot, that selector tool. And this one is just going to give us the trim. So you can see there it's a kind of staple shape and that's going to let you crop basically. If you, if you do image editing, um, then it's basically cropping. So it's just taking a chunk off. But then if we click on this sort of border around the top, it's going to select that smart tool that will let us do all these things with just one tool. And this is probably what you're going to be spending most of your time using. We've got the zoom in tool and the pencil as well. We'll go into that later. I'm not going to overwhelm you with, with information just yet. And then over here, we've got the counter. If we hit play just with, with the green one there, you can see that it's counting up seconds. Um, you've got start end length there. That's, that's showing you how long a, a selected piece of audio is. So this, this song is two, two minutes 13. You can see on the ruler there, it's, it's showing that same. But if we just select a small section, it's showing there we, we're selecting three seconds or, or just under four seconds of audio. So that's showing the seconds. But if we drop that down, change it to bars and beats, it's going to count the bars and beats. And it changes that ruler up there as well. So it's no longer showing seconds. It's showing um, bars and beats 
And that's going to be, and if you're making music on Pro Tools first, then you're probably going to be using that more than the minutes and seconds. Now, if you know music, you're probably thinking, well, what, what's that based on, um, those beats and, and bars? It's based on the tempo that's been set up here. So by default, it's set to 120 BPM. If you double click on that little red triangle there, you can change it. So we can slow things down, say 75 BPM and click OK. And now, it's uh, they're much longer the, the beats and, and bars. If we go back, um, it changes accordingly. There are metronome tools within Pro Tools first, which I'll show you as we get into the recording stage. And those metronome tools are going to be based on whichever tempo you've set. So make sure you get that right if you are playing to a click. Um, also, if you're if you're using timed effects like delays and things, it's also going to be affected potentially by that tempo as well. So then let's move on past the counter. Got a few extra tools here. We've got the metronome, so you can turn that off and on from there. We've got some a couple of MIDI options there, which we'll be looking into when we go into the MIDI. And then we're over to the transport. So you're, I'm sure you'll recognize these icons. You've got stop, play, record. That will bring you right back to the beginning. And that one will put you right at the end and then you've got rewind and fast forward. And then here you've got your master fader. If we click play, you can see that it's, it's showing a, a visual representation of what's coming out of your monitors. Then before we finish up, I just wanna give you a quick overview of what you'll find in the menu bar at the top. Again, I'm not gonna go over every single option, um, but just so you know where to find the most important things. So we've got the file menu where you're gonna find your expected things that you find in a file menu, create a new, a new session um, or a project, open a project, save, import. We looked at that in the in the previous uh, previous part where we imported the audio and export, which we'll be looking at when we export the audio when we're done. In edit, you've got undo and redo, cut, copy, paste, all the expect all the things you'd expect to find in an edit menu, but you'll probably want to be using these. Uh, these shortcuts more often than not. So you probably won't find yourself in the edit menu too much, except for certain useful functions that it can do, like you've got strip silence and consolidate, those are really useful for editing. Then in view, it's gonna let you turn off and on things that you can see within the edit window on, on tracks. This is pretty much the same as this drop down here, where you can turn on and off things that you see on the track. So you can see, um, it, input and output there, that's where, where you set your input and output. You can turn that off, it's gonna be hidden. So view is pretty much replicating these menus and you got the same thing for the mix window, which we'll be looking at. Uh, in track, you can create new track. Again, there's a, it'll show you the shortcuts for them as well. And things like split into mono, so I can split this, this stereo track here into mono. I can also do that by right-clicking the track and clicking split into mono. Then at the bottom there, you've got a very easy way of creating a click track. You can just click on that and it automatically gives you an instrument track um, that has a click plugin on. So if, you, if you're playing, it's gonna be following uh, the BPM, like I said, that's been set on there. If you wanna get rid of a track, you can right click on the name there and click delete. Then you've got a vent as well. It's gonna let you, um, perform operations on your audio and your MIDI, things like quantize to get it lined up, um, time operations, basically just things that will save you time in the editing stage. Audio Suite is gonna list all of your plugins. Um, so you can get to your plugins there and apply them directly to a piece of audio. Options lists, option, options has a few settings that are gonna change the way that Pro Tools first works. So for example, if we go into edit window scrolling, we can change how the window scrolls during playback. So it's currently on no scrolling, which means if we zoom in and it's not gonna scroll even when the, the cursor's gone out of the screen. Whereas if we put that on page, um, it's gonna change. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna move things along so you can see what you're what you're doing. Setup, not gonna go into too much detail on that at the moment, but you you will have seen playback engine if you've already set your audio interface up. Um, and it's just general system things, language, um, language setting up MIDI for example. Window, this is relevant to what we're doing today. 
it will let you show and hide different windows. For example, if you want that transport back, that separate transport window, you can click on that or press Control or Command 1 and it's going to pop up there. Um, you've also got things like the big counter, which is basically just showing you what the counter is, but, but much larger. Avid link is all to do with your Avid account and help, of course, is going to give you some links and information, the, the manual basically to Pro Tools. So those are all the main aspects of the user interface that you need to navigate and get started with Pro Tools first. Again, as you move through this course, we're going to be looking at these functions in more detail. You're going to be seeing them in action. And also I'll give you some tips and, and information on, on the other ones we didn't cover. You should now have an awareness of where you can find all the main functions that you need to get started with Pro Tools first. In part seven, we're going to be going over the mixer or the mix window. It's a separate window. Um, that I briefly showed you in this video separate from the edit window and we'll be finding out what that's all about what you can use it for so hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you're notified when part 7 is out leave a like if this video helped you and let me know if there's anything that you're still not sure about when it comes to the edit window in Pro Tools first and I'll jump in into the comments and help out and as always thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in part 7